Hi guys and big welcome to CDG TV gameplay. This time we have Sad Nauseum Adam with us. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So you're doing podcast, I've heard. Yeah, so uh, I help co-host the podcast Sad Nos. It is a CEDH podcast uh, where we cover all things from the decklist database to tournaments and events that are going on, as well as, you know, just decklist discussions and, and all different types of things where we talk ad nauseum about uh, all different topics. You talk ad nauseum. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a favorite joke of ours. Uh, I'm also a uh, caster for Eminence, uh, which uh, hosts the most TDH tournaments in the United States currently right now, as well as online events like uh, Mox Masters and other on turn like that. And today you're here to play Nagella, Blade Blossom, and there's an Adnos, right? There, yeah, I see it. There's an Adnos for it. Yeah, this is uh, Nagila. I call it uh, OBC. Uh, it's like Nagila, only bad cards. But uh, it's a variation on z -Rob list which is called the truth where it's a turbo Nijila strategy that tries to utilize ad nos thoracal consult and you know underworld breach lines in conjunction with cards like derevi and grim hireling to pull out a wind bluff also with us we have uh, bjorden you want to play this thing again mommy i do i'm back with mommy uh she was super fun the last time i had a little bit of a slow start the uh last game so i wanted to give it another chance to see if we can get her to her full potential so i hope you guys were not interested in having fun today isn't that the theme of cdh be staxed to death or be comboed out before right but i play? i'm gonna be having fun that's yeah that's the important yeah that's the thing you having fun and no one else have fun that's the course there's thing. there's a finite amount of fun to be had in this game and i'm going to take all of it. and then pontus is playing elsha of the infinite yeah i'm going back to my original roots where the first real cdh take i played was elsha that's not true you uh, get drug is, first. that was one time and then i returned with elsha okay sure True. Uh, but yeah, it's a different stake on the DDD list. It's basically the same with some extra mana and some extra turn spells, which are kind of fun. But in essence, it's just Elsha, like just guy, Breach, Storm, stuff. Really misses Adnos. I also miss Adnos. I'm going full weird. I'm playing Omnath Locus of Creation, which is some a commander I've said is not that great. And I kind of still stick with that. It's not that great. But I kind of fell in love in the concept of the kitten because I think the Spacer Kitten is pretty cool. And I always kind of want to do something good with it. And Omnath feels like a good commander for that because you can flick your Omnath to draw cards with Kitten. And you can build strange storm strategies with that. So I, I kind of want to try that out, so to say. All colors but black. And with that, let's take a look at our opening hands. Okay, uh, first seven looks really good, actually. Uh, it could be better. This Wheel of Misfortune would be way better as any other wheel in the deck, but it's still pretty free. I don't think Jordan will pay any life because you don't usually want to wheel in the stack state. And also wheeling before you have your turn one is always kind of risky. So I think this Wheel of Misfortune would be kind of free, and I also don't care about my life. And then I will untap turn two with at least four mana and three extra for Elsha, which is really great. And I like this hand. If I draw some other fast mana, it will be crazy, but it's good anyway. Let's go. So first seven. Yeah. A force of will but nothing to do just mana so we're gonna mill again we want we want the progress can't just keep interaction <laughs> second seven we have a fish turn one fish no lander uh it's like if we load us pedal into fish and pass turn they're just not gonna feed the fish otherwise it doesn't really matter because the fish is gonna be gone too risky love to keep it but we're mulliganing we have a bird of paradise phantasmal image swords deflecting this hand feels safe like we're gonna get our commander into play here eventually with this hand wait a minute nowhere Oh no, this is so annoying. Our only green source is Exotic Orchard. And we need a bird. Probably get a green source of mana through a turn cycle here though. Keeping this or tossing this? I mean, Tasmal Image is great here. Just because there, there's an Elsha of the Infinite that probably wanna come into play, I'm gonna keep this hand even just because of that. Because then I can copy Elsha, Swords Elsha, and have a game plan. And eventually the Daniela player will put a force into play for my bird. So we're keeping this hand not great but it's it's gonna work eventually usually i like to keep hands that have some type of development on turn one they don't always have to present a win condition right so here we can see that there's three lands a mox diamond and a chrome mox sorry adam we can't see those cards in your hand because there was an error in adam's setup but we discovered it well now uh, during editing because during the game, we can't see his hand, so we couldn't realize that his hand wasn't in the recording, so to say. So therefore, we're gonna cut off his entire mulligan here, and during the game, sorry, you won't be able to see what he has there. 
Okay, let's do mulligans. Bam. Okay. Uh, it's funny we got uh, regular. This hand doesn't really do anything. It's not very quick. So um, if we had like a soul ring or some fast meta that we could get transfer out or something, uh, we would do it. But we're not. So we'll... Second seven. Okay, I like this. We have some sack pieces. We have some protection. We have way to draw cards. Yeah, let's do it. I will start us off. Draw. I will play a mystery ring first. I would like to fetch. Finding a volcanic island. I would like to tap it for a soul ring. I would then like to cast a moxopo and then I would like to cast a Yule Lotus. After that, I'd like to tap for three to cast this Wheel of Misfortune. Sadly, not the Wheel of Fortune, but here we are. Wheel of Misfortune resolves. Okay, so real numbers in three, two, one, go. So I show seven, Mons shows eight, and Adam and Jordan shows zero, which means Mons loses eight and wheels. I wheel, and Jordan and Adam does not wheel. Ah! <sighs> So I was, I really wanted to va like gamble on that one a lot. Like I wasn't super happy about my hand, and I kind of just wanted a new hand. This hand is absolutely amazing. But I don't have a land. I can get a forest right now. One forest. We have a carpet and then a fish. This hand could be bonkers if I top take a forest right now. If not, super sad. And then I'll pass my turn. All right. So this one, this one is important. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> Founders and Cleave! Oh, oh no! Mana Crypt pass! Cry! <laughs> oh no! So, Ancient Tomb. Tap my Ancient Tomb and play this Thalwurst. After that, I am just going to pass my turn. Alright, I will draw a card. Oh, wonderful. I am going to play a Plains, Snow Covered. And we're going to play OG Mommy, uh, Mother of Runes, and pass the turn. Land for turn. I will shock in a Halotomp, playing to tap. Tap Soul Ring to cast a Grimondle. I will crack a Yule Lotus and tap two more to cast Alsha. And then I will tap three, or one floating. Why am I bad at math? I'm literally a math team. I'll tap three, cast Arcane Signets, Rhystic Study. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> I'm ready to concede. Don't do me like this, Adam. I will respond to Rhystic Study. I am going to tap my Fellwar Stone for a blue and put a Mystical Tutor on the stack. Search my library for a instant. I'm going to get Ad Nauseam and then I will put that card on top of my library. And then I have no further responses. Somehow, not the biggest threat, but I passed the turn. <laughs> if we just draw the right thing here, green source. <laughs> This should have happened previous turn, we would have been in a so good position. Or a, a tropical island, tap. Casting carpet flowers, I wanna go to my second main phase. I wanna generate two blue mana. I wanna use one of the blue mana to cast fish. No. Fish resolves. I wanna use the other blue mana and this land here that taps for blue, uh, nothing, and cast a ledger shredder. And I'm ready for the ad nauseum. This should have, <laughs> that this, this should have happened previous turn, honestly. And then I ask the turn. Cool. Untap and draw a card. Whoa, look at that card. That thing is pretty nice. Badlands as my land for turn. I am then going to tap my ancient tomb, losing two life for a talisman of indulgence. Both of you can draw. I'm not paying them. <laughs> and then I will tap my talisman for uh, a colorless, tap my fellwar stone for a uh, blue, and my badlands for a red. And I'd like to cast Najila the Blade Blossom. Rhystic Trigger, you may draw. I will also draw because of Ledger Shredder. I will discard so many great cards here. This Veil of Summer. Uh, no other effects, so I'll pass. Okay. Don't think we're going to get there. So we're going to play planes. We're going to play a Chromox. We are going to imprint Alish Norn. Mm, I'll pay. And then we're going to tap two to play uh, Ether Sworn Cannon. Uh, you can draw. And with that, I will pass the turn. Let your Shredder draws, and I discard Lionside Diamond, uh, where it belongs. Go to my turn. Land for turn would be an Ancient 2. Cast a Rolling Earthquake, Exist 2. Oh, right! I forgot about that interaction. This is damage. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well. I will give Ether Sworn Cannonist a protection from red with uh, OG Mommy. Yeah, and since that's my non, uh, non artifact spell for the turn, I'll go to clean up. I don't take any damage from the mana crypt, untap and draw a card, pay for fish, lay mountain, tap soul ring, I mean mana crypt, cast soul ring, and pay for rustic study. Going to second main phase, adding two red mana from the carpet, and I wanna cast a ragavan. And then I wanna trigger ledger shredder to draw a card, discarding this grand abolisher to the graveyard, combat, 
attacking Villager Shredder at Nayela, who tutored for Adnos for four da uh, five, four damage. Yeah, I don't have any block, so I will take four damage. And then I pass the turn. Untap and draw. That is a nice draw to see, actually. I'm going to play this Underground Sea as my land for turn, and I would like to cast a Rhystic Study. I'll use the Felwar Stone for uh, your Rhystic Study. So my my theory with this is that I believe that Pontus has interaction here, which is why I'm not comfortable just jamming the Ad Nauseam, right? He's got a full grip, and the like. this Rhystic Study is kind of, kind of bait and kind of not, because I need this card advantage here in the position that I'm in, right? Like, there's going to be more spells getting put on the stack and with an Aether Sworn out, I don't want to jam a main phase ad nauseum when I can hold it up for a few turns. The problem is that I'm going to take a bunch of damage here from this Ledger Shredder, this Ragavan, and this, this Alsha, but that's kind of the sacrifice I have to make and just hope that this ad nauseum kind of gets me closer. This Lim Duel's Ball can get me an explosive Dockside turn. So as soon as this, like, Rilla Blah piece is gone, which both of these players also want to leave the board, uh, I can kind of Lim Duels and try to go for a win later on and hope that Rhystic Study just draws me a bunch of cards until then. But I I don't feel comfortable jamming this Adnos here and with my Najila gone I can't use this Lim Duel's Ball you know as a way to get a Derevi or an additional win con in game so uh, I just have to bide my time and hope that this is enough pass my turn. Okay, we might just draw a card it's not a bad one but we are going to play this Plains and we are going to pass the turn. In your end step I'd like to take two damage to untap my Grim Monolith. Uh, then I'll go to my turn. Land for turn will be an Erd Mesa I would like to fetch. I will respond with a Archivist of Akma. Ooh. So I will gain a life and draw a card. I will pay. Finding a plateau. Then I will use past the turn. Take damage. Untap and draw a card. A for fish. Combat. Ragavan is going at Nagella. And so is Ledger Shredder as well. We're just piling it on. All right. There is a Savannah. Savannah will go to permanent exile. Second main phase, I will trigger the flowers to white mana. I'm going to play Tundra as a land drop. Announce and cause. Omna, Lucas of Creation. By using carpet, white mana here. To use the white mana there and pay for the stick study. Red, green, and blue. I also actually tap this one to pay for the other stick study when I think about it. Uh, it. It be draw card. And I will pass the turn. Untap Marsh Flats as my land for turn. Crack this Marsh Flats, losing a life. I will get a Bayou onto the battlefield. And I would like to attempt to cast an Ajila, not paying for a stick study. Pass my turn. Planes here. Five mana. And and play a mummy. Uh, you can draw. And if mummy resolves, I'll pass the turn. Oh, that's right. Oh, this is an impressive card. <laughs> In your end step, Jordan, I would like to sort of plow to plowshares the uh, Aether Sword. I can pay my taxes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, guys, uh, Jordan is clearly the threat. He has over the starting life total. We need to deal with that. <laughs> sure, yeah. This is the guy who's removing the blah blah blah. It's not their how turn. it works, but I think you're <laughs> scary here. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you're right. Adam is scary. He has nose in hand. And there's no Adam, to fly anymore. Adam, have you ever seen the uh, movie um, Memento? Oh, no, I have not seen Memento. Okay, well, at the beginning of the movie, it's about a guy who, like, he constantly loses his memory. Okay. Uh, and he has a photograph of a person, and under it, it says, don't believe his lies. That's Pontus. Ah, I see, I see. I, I never lie. I just, like, feel with the truth of it. I am going to pay a uh, blue and a black and put a limb to his ball this I cannot pay for your sir. I also cannot pay for Mons's Mystical Reward. I'm stacking my deck for Pontus to turn. I'm putting this on the stack now because it will resolve. One, two, three, four, five. I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, game. I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll do it again. I'll have to stack this properly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack this with Fierce on the top, Deadly Relic second, and then put Vampiric Underworld Breach and Vampiric tutor following it with cluster storm very last uh sort resolves then i would like to do my turn land for turn will be a command tower tap three mana for a intuition from the top of my library i'll set trigger uh risk study trigger and a fish trigger you guys can draw i will reveal defense grid savings underworld breach ah uh, this is tough because savings gets the underworld breach into play no matter what i think he's gonna start with defense grid no matter what here so i think what we should do is give him savings because that's more mana compared to the other two. We don't want to give him Underworld Breach because that means he can cost counter spells forever against our... Now, he will win the counter or if he has Breach. We can never reach that point. I'll give you Savine's Reclamation to your hand. Okay. And I would like to snap the Najila. This puts me in a really tough spot here, Mons, because... 
<laughs> my good cards are no longer good without Najila. <laughs> I understand. In that case, I think we're gonna fire it off. And I will respond to Snap by sacrificing this treasure. I think this soldering for Polaris cast silence. I wanna pay for your Rhystic Study Pontus, but I'm not paying for yours, Adam. And let you share the triggers because you cost two spells and I draw a card and I discard this temple god into the grave. Okay, then I will draw a card. Uh, I'll respond to silence. I would like to cast a swan song, targeting the silence, not playing my taxes. I'm passing on the swan song. If you have something, that would be great. I will cast a fierce guardianship, not paying its costs. Because I have a commander, I don't have to pay its cost, targeting your swan song. Yeah, both of you are able to draw. I have a response to fierce guardianship. I will cast this deflecting swans, targeting fierce guardianship, not paying my taxes. You can both draw. Uh, sadly, I have to pass on this, actually. I'm going to fire off a deadly relic target. So you, you target Elisha with the, the deadly relic. Yeah. I draw a card. And I draw a card because of Ledger Shredder 2. 1, 2, Scotting's land to the grave. Yeah, sure. Uh, Elsha can be exiled. We are back to the Flicking Swords. You have more, my friend? I don't. No, I uh, I used all that I had. <laughs> yeah, I've been drawing lands, so no. So I have to pass on everything here. Yeah, I'll pass here as well. Okay, uh, the Flicking Swords will change the target of Fierce Guardianship to Silence, and Swanson will whistle because Fierce Guardianship counter Silence. Then Snap on Najila. I have no response to Snap on Najila. And I will untap two lands. I'll use the uh, tap white mana, use the two colorless floating to cast a civilian's reclamation targeting my defense grid. I have uh, sadly no response to this. I have no response as well. Defense grid comes into play. I would then like to cast this final portion. Go to my next turn. There's nothing I want to cast. No. Untap, everything but that. Land return with the training grounds. I will cast a chrome box. You can both draw. Imprinting a fine twister. Five mana. I would like to flashback Savin's reclamation targeting my bridge. It comes into play. Then I have a copy of Savin's, which will get back my land, I guess. Mr. Rainforest, I'll fetch. Then, with bridge in play, I will tap three mana to uh, cast my intu intuition from my graveyard, targeting mons. You can both draw. I will choose these three, they can all go to the graveyard, does not really matter. I will then cast this LED, exiling three cards, crack it for three blue, discarding my hand, which is a fluster storm, gamble, land, land, offer. And then I will present a loop where I brain freeze myself, and then I brain freeze my opponents, and then I wheel to kill them all. GG.